Right, so let's make a start then. Oh, hi Sue from Sunny Ringwood. Um, so welcome to tonight's webinar. As you can see, the, tonight's webinar is called Supporting Your New Team Members. And this is the fifth in a series of eight webinars that I run. Uh, the first three, as you can see there, getting started your first few weeks and building a customer base are mainly about the retail side of the business. I do introduce the other bits, but mainly about the retail side. Last week and this week are more about the, the team building side. Um, explaining last week really about why it, why you should really consider team building even if it's not something you set out to do when you join the business. And then next week, six, seven and eight, the next three weeks are about kind of other parts of the business that are probably more important than the first five bits. And that's just all about your own personal development, setting goals and your attitude to the whole business because that can make a massive difference to your success. Now, I run the webinars every Wednesday night, um, so once a week. So it normally takes about nine or ten weeks to get around the whole lot, because there's usually one or two weeks when I can't make it for some reason. Um, and all the webinars are recorded. I'll explain um, at the end of, the record, uh, end of tonight's webinar where the recordings are held. But what that means is, if you just started, for example, you don't need to wait four or five weeks to watch the Getting Started one. You can go to the recordings and watch that straight after this if you want to. So, tonight we're talking about supporting new team members. So what I want to talk a little bit about is just understanding the numbers because, um, like a lot of uh, uh, different parts of this business, um, understanding the numbers is, is important. The first seven days, which is very very important uh, time in the, the, the life if you like of a new team member uh, understanding some early problems and anticipating them helping new members keep on track getting them to their first event their first meeting and something which I find is it's more of a, a, a useful thing for me and I just wanted to share it with you and that is to have a little checklist of what you do when you've got a new team member because if you've only recruited one then you probably don't need a checklist but if you're starting to recruit people regularly, and by that I mean probably more than one a period, then it's useful to have a list of the things you go through with new team members, otherwise you're kind of having to invent it again every time. So, the exciting bit, last week we talked a bit about how to find people that might be interested in, in starting their own home shopping business, and if you do have somebody in your team who's like that, that's when it can get really exciting. However, it's also where a lot of hard work begins. And uh, somebody once said at one of the conferences that I, re I remember very clearly, your success in Clean Easy will be in direct proportion to the amount of frustration you can deal with. Just like any part of the business, it can be a bit of a roller coaster at times. You will have team members that come in, get very independent very quickly, absolutely fly with the business, and they're an absolute pleasure to deal with. And you'll have other people that require a lot of your time and care and attention uh, to help them over the ups and downs of the business. And that can be a bit frustrating at times, so you need to be prepared for that. But remember, you don't need to recruit a thousand people to have a huge business in, in Clean Easy. All you really need is five serious people. Because if you've got somebody who's serious, they will start wanting to do the same that you're doing. So they'll look for recruiting people. And those people will be recruiting people as well. So you only really need five serious people to build a massive business. So once somebody signed up, for goodness sake, don't just think, brilliant, I've, they've signed on the dotted line, they've handed over their cash, now they're going to go off and do loads of work and earn me a load of money. Because without your aftercare and support, more than likely, they will drop by the way, the, drop by the roadside very, very quickly because your care and support is the biggest impact you can have on the success of your new team member. However, you've got to understand that probably the biggest impact overall is them themselves. If they've got a good work ethic and they understand it's a business, not a job, and they're willing to learn, then they, they'll go far. But if they're not, then no matter how well you look after them, it's going to be a struggle. So you need to understand that many distributors will leave and all you can ask yourself is after they've left, did you do everything you could to support them? Because if you can honestly hand on heart say, say yes I did everything that I could have done then that's fine, there's nothing else you could have done. 
But if you think, oh, you know what, maybe I should have called them once or twice, or maybe I should have helped them get up started, or maybe I should pop round and visit them because they're, they're on the other side of town. If you can look back and think there was things that you should have done, then at least hopefully there'll be some lessons learned for, for you there. One really important part of supporting your new team members is to keep in touch. There's a little phrase there, somebody says, constant communication keeps people inspired. And, and that's very, very true. And, and one thing you will find, though, is it doesn't always have to be one way. What you'll find is your leaders, the people who are ambitious and keen to learn and wanting to move in the business quickly, they'll be the ones who are always contacting you. So if you do have people who are contacting you all the time, even if they're just asking questions and you're thinking, well, you know what, that should be fairly straightforward, don't get frustrated at all because they will learn all these things and the fact that they're asking you to learn is really, really important because they're showing you the first signs of being, there, being leaders. So a quick question for everybody, and I know some of you will have seen this before, but um, how often do you think you should contact your new team members in their first week? Any suggestions? How many times would you say? Oh, Lucinda says every day, and yours daily. Anyone else got any thoughts? Yeah, Brian says daily. Yeah, lots of people saying daily. Uh, Sean, depends on the person. Yeah, that's true. Personally, I try to call them every day. Um, and it's not like every day for three quarters of an hour going through lots and lots of learning uh, things. It's really just building a bit of rapport with them, showing them that you care, showing them that, you know, answer any questions they might have, just moving on the, the next step in their business. You know, if you try to teach them everything they need to know in their first day or two, they're just, their heads are just going to be kind of exploding with all the information. So, so showing them a little bit during their first seven days um, is a great way to give them the opportunity to ask any questions about what you went through yesterday with them, um, any other questions that they might have, and just showing them that you're there for them. So they'll get used to talking to you, they'll have their, your number stored on their phone, and they'll feel a lot more confident about calling you if they've got a question when they see that you're there to support them all the time. So just as a rough idea, and this isn't kind of in concrete, because as Sean says, some people are, it's going to be very dependent. Some people will learn things really quickly and move on quite independently. Other people will have to go over things a couple of times. So um, what I tend to do is day zero, and by that I mean pretty much the, the minute that they have completed their registration, if they're interested in the Facebook selling, I will send them send them a link to or point them towards the you know the the website with the Andy Boswell's four four five training videos on there. That's www.sellonfb.co.uk. So I say go and watch that. Once you've watched the videos, let me know and I can help you get set up on the Facebook side of things. I also take this opportunity to, to promote the first event. Promoting events, and by that I mean webinars like this. Um, conferences, uh, local meetings, whatever the events are that you go to or that are near to them, the sooner you start promoting them, the, the more importance you assign to them. So if you say to them, I'm going to send you this link, um, I'm also going to send you an email with the dates of the next couple of meetings because we have a local meeting coming up, it's not far from you, um, you'll find them really, really useful because there's you know, people in the business who have been doing it for a while and and they'll be able to pass on great hints and tips and you'll get a much better idea of, of kind of how exciting things are at the moment with all the Facebook stuff going on. And if you just mention that in the first few days, they start to um, think about, OK, let, these meetings must be really important because he's sort of, you know, they're talking about them straight away. Maybe then on day one, what you might do, so this is the day after they've signed up with a bit of luck. If they're keen and they're doing the Facebook selling, they'll have watched those videos. And um, you can then say, okay, let's get your selling group set up. And um, Sean, I, I was passed a fantastic suggestion by Sean, um, by Lynn and Dave actually told me to it at the last millionaires, which is you can actually create some dummy selling groups with a few things in and um, ready for your new team members. If you're recruiting regularly, 
you don't have to wait for somebody to join and then help them set up their selling group. You could have one set up with you as the administrator, half a dozen or a dozen products in there, a cover picture, and then when somebody joins, you can make them the admin of that group, change the name of it, and they're kind of up and running, ready to go within about 30 seconds if, if you want them to. So help them to get up their, their selling group ready, and tell them, you know, if they've ordered catalogs as well, explain the catalogs will be coming probably tomorrow, obviously depending on whether it was before or after 3 o'clock when they signed up, but letting them know when their catalogs are coming, and pointing them towards any training on how to get their catalog set up, or maybe arranging to pop round to see them. That's always a good thing if, if somebody um, is getting catalogs. If you can go round and help them get them all ready, that's a great way to, to build a bit of rapport with them as well. Um, the second day, um, what I would tend to do is go through um, what I call a getting started appointment. And that's really um, kind of setting their expectations of the business. So it's not so much going through nitty gritty of this is what you do with a catalogue or this is how you put a post on your Facebook group. It's kind of ex explaining to them the importance of being prepared to learn. Um, a good, this is a good time to reiterate the next meeting. You know, how are they going to get there? Have they thought about it? Um, you know, do they need uh, help with transport, anything like that? Um, and so it, it's kind of, I find that a good, uh, it's almost like just stepping back a little bit because by then they may have already been getting into Facebook and doing a few things. Um, and this just allows you to step back a little bit, making sure you understand what their goals are, how much time they've got, have they started to think about a, a plan for when they're going to put their catalogs out or what times of day they're able to do their, their posting and so on. So again, that's a, another good opportunity to, to get to know them and start to build that rapport. Day three could be something like uh, checking, have their catalogs arrived okay? Do they know what to do? Are they happy with setting them all up? Are you going to arrange to pop round and do that with them? And if they're doing the Facebook side, have they started to join their local groups yet? And, and again, promoting the next event, you can say things like, oh, don't remember this, don't forget, this time next week, um, we've got our local meeting at the, you know, the Dog and Duck or whatever it might happen to be. And um, we just heard the you know, fantastic new speaker. This guy's been in the business for five years and he was the top distributor two years on the trot you know, whatever it might be so you know and um, just whoever the speaker is kind of explain what a fantastic speaker he is um, and how it's really going to help them explode their business from so soon in, in their business so promoting that event again I, I'm a big believer in every time you speak to somebody it's an opportunity to inspire them and an opportunity to promote an event so if you've got events coming up don't miss opportunities to promote them um, and so day four could just be a kind of, how's it going? Did you manage to get your catalogs delivered? How did that go? Or um, have you been uh, joining local groups? How many groups are you in yet? Because you're obviously you're looking to get them up to 30 to 60 local groups. And um, how many people are in your selling group? How is that going? Uh, have you invited your friends and family? All those sorts of things. So that could just be a little kind of, how are things going? However things are going for them, congratulate them. Even if they've just got one friend who's joined their group, then say, well done, that's your first potential customer. Um, you know, make sure that you say, thank you for joining the group, you know, and send them a private message or anything like that. So, um, you know, congratulations are a great thing to do. It's really easy to do, but it can mean a lot to somebody who's just started in the business. It gives them the reassurance that they're heading in the right direction, that they're doing something right. Um, day five could just be a kind of, hi, any questions? Is everything going okay? And, and obviously, as you get further and further into it, it all now depends on how they are doing, how, how are things going, have they started their group, have they uh, sold anything yet, are they ready to put an order in yet, all those sorts of things. Um, so day six could be maybe they're ready to put their first order in. Um, if they're keen and they're, they've, you know, they're, they've got kind of lots of orders and they want to wait until they've got £150 so they can get free delivery and the free catalogues, then obviously you can guide them through that as well. And then maybe day seven or eight or sometime later, their first order arrives, you can explain a bit more about you know, what to look for when you're unpacking the box, um, how to contact your customers, that sort of thing. So that's really just a, a rough idea of the sorts of things you can go through in their first seven days. But if you look on there, there's lots and lots of stuff that you can ask them. And if you're only calling them, 
once or twice in their first week, then each time you call them, you're going to be going through a lot. And that could just, it can be quite difficult, I think, for people to take in a lot um, in kind of a short time. Whereas giving them just a little bit each day is a much better way for them to learn. So, let's move on a little bit. The next step is all about anticipating and eliminating any early errors. So there's all sorts of little things that can go wrong when you first start on our business. Little things like, you know, they need to send a photo in for their ID card. If they didn't do it at their sign-up step, the last step in the sign-up process, ask them to do one, but they don't have to at that point. So just make sure they've done that within their first 28 days, I think it needs to be. Um, and also inoculate them against failure. And what I mean by that is, don't try to pretend to them that everything is always going to be an amazing time. You know, this business is really exciting at the moment, but it does rain in this country. And if they're delivering catalogues, they will have pickups where they get no orders. They might have pickups where they just get a few orders, especially at the beginning where they're building it up. Um, so you need to help them to understand the, the way the business grows and, and have building a customer base. And it's just a case of going through the process, making sure that people get to see your catalogs as often as you can. There will be some grumpy people that sort of say, I'm not interested in your bloody catalog. And that's fine. Just cross them off your list. Don't, you know, you, don't, you won't ever see them again. Um, and when you're selling things on Facebook, you will get people commenting saying, oh, I can get this for half the price at my local Asda. So just prepare them for those sorts of things so that when it does happen, they know what to do. And make sure they know who their upline is. So initially, it's probably just you and them talking, but if you're ever unavailable, then they need to know who to go to next. And obviously, there's all sorts of support now with the help desk and the, the Facebook support group. But understanding the fact that they've got an upline and somebody who supports you and somebody who supports that person and somebody who supports that person gives them a feeling of being part of a big team and the fact that they've got contact numbers of a number of people who they can call if they need to speak to somebody for help. Um, and the other thing, and I know I'm, I'm banging on about this, just say to them, don't forget to ask them if they're coming to a meeting. Now, what I mean by this is make sure that you're promoting the meetings, not just announcing them. And what I mean by that is it's really easy to just send emails to your team saying, you know, dear team, don't forget we've got an opportunity meeting at the Dog and Dog next Wednesday the 23rd. And then you can just sort of think, well, I've told them there's a meeting. If they want to come along, they'll, they'll come along. And all you're doing there is announcing it. You're not explaining to them the importance of it to their business, how valuable it is, how much they can learn, how inspiring it's going to be. Um, so promote the meetings. Don't just announce them to them. Um, as I said a bit earlier, you need to explain the steps about building a customer base, that not every pickup is going to be wonderful, that sometimes you'll put uh, posts on 50 groups, uh, three different products, it takes you three hours all night long, and you don't get a single order. And sometimes that happens, you just have to build it up gradually while you're finding that customer base. And as I think I've said this already, talk to them regularly when their kit arrives, if they're dropping their catalogs, when they're picking them up, when they're putting their first order in and so on, that talking to them as, as well as giving them the information that they need to run their business successfully, it, it, it's really important that you're building that relationship between you and them so that they get to know you and like you and trust you. So what other things can go wrong? Well, if they started on the instalments path, then make sure you know the dates that their next instalments are due. Do. It's easy to say, oh, well, it'll be on 30 days after your sign up, £45 will come out of the same card that you use. But they'll easily forget about it. And if their their finances are quite tight and they don't have the money when the £45 is due, then if it fails, their account goes on hold, they can't put orders in. And, and sometimes, depending on how quickly they pay off what they owe, Clean Easy will insist that they pay off everything that's outstanding before their account will be activated again. So instead of it just being a £45 instalment payment, they might have to pay £135, everything that's outstanding. So don't miss those dates. I'm just grabbing a swig of my cup of tea. Keeping track of um, how their business is 
going is really, really important. And once they've been doing it for a little while, they'll be able to do it themselves. But your responsibility for your new team member is to make sure that you've got an idea of how much they're looking to earn. And just making sure that that's realistic. If somebody joins up and says, yeah, I am really keen. I've, you know, I've just been made redundant. I need oh, probably about a £1,000 a month um, uh, to help pay my, my, uh, my rent. Um, and I, I do a lot of voluntary work, so I've just got a couple of hours on a Saturday morning. That'll be okay, won't it? And of course, you need to make them realise that that's totally unrealistic. They, they need time to do their Facebook posts. They need to make time to put their catalogues out. So based on what they're looking to earn, how many catalogues do they need to put out each week? Are they posting on Facebook regularly? Because the the, the Facebook earnings can be very up and down. At the beginning, we you know there will be stories of people who have made you know a thousand pounds worth of orders in their first fortnight, and other people who are just getting their first couple of orders after a fortnight. So they need to understand that um, you've got to be posting all the time on Facebook to build up that your your kind of presence in your local area. But if you're helping them keep track by saying to them, so how many groups are you in? How many times are you posting? How many catalogues have you put out? Um, have you affected them all back in again? Um, and explaining about the bonus system. So again, that's really important that they understand as you're getting towards the end of a period, do they have, you know, if they just need an extra five or ten points, excuse me, on top of an order that they're about to put in, and that would give them, say, a 40 or a 50 pound bonus, then it's worth ordering something, even if it's just something for themselves or something that they will hopefully sell on in the next kind of period to make sure that they get over the bonus. If they, if you don't tell them that and they miss their bonus by just say five or ten pounds, that could be really disheartening when they realise that at some point. So make sure you're helping them keep track of all of that, um, and just make sure you help them set their first goals. That the 30-day challenge is a great goal to help you get started. Putting those 150 pound orders in, even if somebody joins just to do Facebook, getting some free catalogues by putting an order in is great because they can show those catalogues to friends and family who might not be on Facebook, they can give catalogues to customers who come and collect their orders, and, and they can start giving a few catalogues out to their neighbours as well. So that 30-day challenge is really important to make sure people are aware what they can achieve in their first 30 days. I mentioned there about the 10% the bonus, so that's you know on top of their commission, you can get an extra 40 or £50 pounds just by hitting this target in this 28 days. And that 90 day challenge shouldn't be there anymore. We, uh, we stopped doing that, but uh, I keep saying I must be able to remove that. So, meetings and trainings. I've, I've been on about this as, uh, uh, before. As well as promoting it to your team, you need to be going to all of the meetings and trainings at, in your area. So, obviously, you guys come to the webinars anyway, you're all on here, so I'm preaching to the converted. But it's really important that you show your team members the importance and the value of them. And if you're not going to them yourself, they're just going to copy you. So you need to be at every meeting. Even if you don't have a team member coming along, think about the other people in your area who are coming to the meeting. If they come along with one or two new team members and there's hardly anybody else there at the meeting, it's a bit disheartening for them. But if you go along, and maybe your offline goes along, and a couple of other people who don't have any other team members, they go along as well, that makes it more of a buzz in the meeting. And if you train that to your downline, then they'll go to meetings when you might bring somebody along. And again, so you all benefit. So if your attitude is, I'm only going to turn up if I've got a team member there, then that will brush off on everybody else, and it will really be a downward spiral. You need to be going to the meetings and the trainings, to show people a good example. As I said there, you should be the leader that you see. Okay, I'm not going to go through this in all uh, too much detail, but I'm a big believer in lists. <laughs> you might not be, and I totally understand that, but um, I like, if I've got a new team member coming, I've got a list of things that I go through with them, so making sure I've got all of their contact details. I know how many catalogues they started off with. I know what they wanted from Clean Easy what their situation is, how much time they've got and so on. I have a set of emails that I send to new starters, so I can do that. And I obviously add their contacts to my phone details and so on. So just having a list of things that you do is a great way just to make sure that you're consistent and that you give your new team members every possible help. 
And the beauty of having a list is if you have a new team member who joins, and maybe after he's been in the business a couple of weeks, he says something like, oh, you know what, it would have been fantastic if I'd had this just uh, last week, because this is, this is a really useful bit of information. And you can say, oh, well, that's so good, I never even thought about that. And then you can change your list to provide that piece of information, whatever it was, to all new starters from that point going forward at the end of their first week, or whatever it might be. If you don't have a list, you're kind of re re relying on yourself to remember those things. And if your memory is anything like mine, uh, <laughs> that just won't happen. Um, so, as well as supporting your individuals, what's really important as well is showing them how to track their PSG. And that's your personal sales group. Because, especially on Facebook now, it's so easy to get people to join the business quickly when you've just started yourself. You could have friends who see what you're doing on Facebook, ask you about it, and within a couple of days they might want to join. So it's important that people can, that, that they know where to look to see their personal sales group, where their orders are going, and so they can track as they're heading towards bonuses and so on. Um, and a good thing to do is just to see how many people have you got in your team who are active, who, who are actually placing orders each period, how many new people are coming into your business, how many serious distributors have you got? And by that I mean, and it's a bit kind of vague, I suppose, um, you will know who are your serious distributors. They're asking you about when's the next meeting. They're uh, asking, how can I learn how to do this? They're, they're kind of putting their catalogs out regularly. They're always on Facebook promoting the business. Um, and you know these are the people who are going to turn into leaders themselves if, if they're not already. Um, so how many of those have you got in your team? Because as I said at the beginning, you only need five serious distributors to have a really successful business. Um, and what sales did your group achieve in that period? And the reason you're doing that is you want to know that you're progressing. And if you can measure what improvement you're achieving, and that's in a reasonable amount of time, then you know you're heading in the right direction. But if the number of active distributors is going up each period, if you're regularly bringing in new people, if you've got two, three, four, five serious people, and you can see that the sales in your group, in your PSG, are growing each period, then that's a great sign that you've got a successful business growing there. Okay, so guys, I'm just coming to the end now. I just wanted to check who's been awake. We've been uh, running now for pretty much half an hour. Um, can you remember at the beginning I said, how many serious people do you need in your team to have a successful business? Anyone remember what I said? Oh, Angela's on the ball. Angela said five. Anybody else? Helen? Yeah, Glyn? Good. Dave? Yeah, Laura? Oh, fantastic. You guys are all wide awake. Obviously, you can have more than that, but if you've got five, you're on en route to having a, a very successful business. As I said, aim for five. Obviously, you can get more than that. It's even better. What did I say at the beginning about how often you should call a new starter in their first seven days? I've probably banged on about this enough. Yep. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Lucinda. Good, good. Glad everyone's seen that. And as I say, I think, you know, I, I say do it every day. You know, if they've been in the business for five days and they say, oh, I'm, I'm going away for a couple of days, um, so I'll be out of touch. Don't panic. It's not the end of the world. You know, if you're, if you're only speaking to them five times out of seven, that's fine. But don't just think, oh, well, I'll speak to them once or twice in their first week. They'll probably pick everything up fairly quickly. Because I, I, I do know some team members who have started and just feel very vulnerable because they, you know, they're not really sure who to contact and they're not getting much support from their team leader, which is a shame. So yes, every day in their first week, I would say, and you know, you will have team members who you speak to very, very regularly, um, and they're liable to be your your leaders. So tonight we covered a bit about understanding the numbers, and what I mean by that is just realise that not everybody who joins your business will stay and will see the big picture as clearly as you've done, and that's okay. All you can do is support them the best that you can. And I tried to cover the importance of the first seven days. I talked a bit about anticipating early problems, so things like you know, they will have some poor pickups, there will be days when they get grumpy people commenting on their Facebook posts. If you've warned them about that, then it's much, much less painful when it does happen. 
um, helping them to keep track, making sure they hit their bonuses, because that's a great thing to do if you can get a bonus in your first full month, that's fantastic. Getting them to their meetings and this webinar, other webinars, there's two or three or four good webinars um, that are available all the time. So whenever they've joined in the business, there's always something in their first few days that you can take them to or get them involved with. Um, and as I said, the that's a personal one of mine. Have a checklist because you can't, you can't be expected to remember everything that you want to do. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this evening. Um, I'm just going to turn off the recording now. Bear with me a moment.